In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create and deploy those images. You will need two computers capable of running Windows 7. One of the computer must be empty so that we can format it and use it to create our image. We will need two 4GB flash drives, 8GB preferred. We will need a Windows 7 installation disk, and we will need spare time. One of the 4GB flash drives, you're going to create a custom Windows PE boot disk using my tutorial. And the other 4GB flash drive, we're going to be creating a Windows 7 uh, installation disk following my other tutorials. I'll be providing links in the description. Now if you do not have a copy of Windows 7, a volume license would be preferred for this tutorial because it's meant for custom deployment. Uh, for this tutorial I am actually using the TechNet evaluation license which you can find at technet.microsoft.com. This is really good for testing out deployment and it's risk free so you can try that out if you don't have a license of Windows 7 hanging around. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, boot up your installation disk, and we're going to be installing Windows 7 on our a reference computer, or our computer we're going to be using to build the image. So we're just going to do a flat out install. You don't have to do anything fancy with this. And once the out of the box experience uh, pops up, we're just going to give it a temporary um, username and computer name. We're going to be resetting this uh, later in the tutorial and we're going to be sending up some uh, temporary information. It, it doesn't really matter what you put in here. So I'm going to just continue with this. And then it will be setting up Windows. Once that's done, we're going to be installing all of our applications that we want to have on our computer when we create our custom Windows image. A quick way to do that is to open up a web browser and navigate to ninite.com. This is an awesome website that creates custom installers that will install multiple applications at once. And there's a ton of applications you can uh, choose from here. For this example, I'm going to choose uh, Firefox, Messenger, um, OpenOffice, iTunes, and the Windows antivirus. And there's a ton of other stuff that you can choose here. This is just a very fast way to get all your a default applications to install so that we can create an image. Now once you have these applications installed you don't have to worry about settings or anything because we're going to uh, reset all that when we create our image. And also a very good compression tool by the way is 7-Zip. It's free unlike WinRAR. It's a really good piece of software. So once you have everything we're going to click run and we're going to install all of our applications. Okay, once you have all that installed, we're going to generalize our image. And to do this, um, there's actually a bug with the tool that we use to generalize. And you're going to have to go to Task Manager and slice Show All Processes from All Users. And we're going to have to kill any process that is running by Windows Media Player because the digital rights management has confliction with SysPrep, which is the program that we're going to be using. So once we select all processes that are ran by Windows Media Player, we're going to navigate to C colon backslash windows backslash system 32 backslash sysprep. And we're going to go into the sysprep folder. And then once we have that, we're going to immediately go back to the task manager and we're going to kill any processes that are being ran by Windows Media Player. In most cases, there will just be one, which will be the network um, process. So kill that and then run sysprep. And we're going to be uh, entering the system audit mode so that we can clean up our system. And we're going to also select generalized so we can install it on any computer. And then after that, we're going to check to make sure that the process doesn't reactivate itself. And we're going to click um, OK. And then um, it will be running for about 10 minutes here. So you're going to have to be patient. But once we're in system audit mode, it will log in as administrator, and we're going to be deleting our temporary user account. So we're going to type in user profile in here, and we're going to select our temporary username, and we're going to kill the username. So we're just going to select delete, and then OK, or yes, and then OK. And after that, we're going to go to computer, left click, and select manage. And we're also going to delete the entry it has here. So go to local users and groups. Double click on users. And then we're just going to delete this. Ignore any warnings.
Okay, once this is done, we're going to uh, open up sysprep again, and we're going to do some stuff that are slightly different. So open up um, sysprep here, uh, c colon backslash windows, backslash system32, backslash sysprep. And this time we're going to enable the out-of-box experience, which is the special welcome thing that I showed earlier, which where we enter our username and stuff. And we're going to generalize again, and then we're going to shut down. When you have your computer in your desirable configurations and have um, enabled out-of-box experience, we're going to reboot into Windows PE, and using ImageX, we're going to uh, capture the image in a WIM file. So type in e colon backslash ImageX, forward slash compress, space fast, space backslash check, space backslash flags, space quotations enterprise, space backslash capture, space d colon, space e colon, backslash install that win, space quotations windows 7 enterprise, space quotations windows 7 enterprise custom. And now the WIM file will vary in size. Mine ended up to be about two and a half gigabytes, but depending on the amount of software that you want pre-installed on your uh, Windows installation, it may be more. So that's why I recommend instead of using a four gigabyte drive, uh, using an eight gigabyte drive, especially if you have media and a, or a lot of updates uh, pre-installed in your configuration. Now a WIM file is what's uh, in the Windows installation disk and the job of setup.exe is to take the WIM file, unpack it and to mask it to your hard drive. So the whole entire Windows installation is in a WIM file. So what we're going to do is once we have this image right here is we are going to replace the install.wim file, that the, the base one that is in the Windows 7 installation disk and we're going to put this new install.wim file in its place. So once we're done capturing the image, this, that will take about an hour. We're going to go to start. We're going to have our Windows 7 installation drive and our Windows PE drive. Now under the Windows 7 installation drive under sources, we're going to delete the default install.win file. And then after that, we're going to go to our Windows PE disk, and you should see an install.win file on the root where we captured it. And we're going to uh, copy or cut this. And we're going to paste it into our installation disk. And that's pretty much it. Now you have a custom a Windows 7 installation disk which will install all of your programs uh, for you that you have saved in the image. And this is very useful for creating mass deployments or for saving time when you have to do reformats. And that's it for this tutorial. Please be sure to check out the description for more information. And thank you for watching. For more tutorials, please go to the hackersjournal.tk.